Okay. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Mathieu Renard and here is uh, Riyad Benajila. We are a member of the Wookie team and we are all working at the National Cyber Security Agency of France where we are focusing our research on um, only did system security. And in our labs, we aim to highlight uh, and reduce potential uh, risk regarding security matters on uh, embedded devices. And to do that, we are uh, doing some research and prototyping uh, the concept we uh, highlight in order to, to try them and to reprove them. Um, just one thing before uh, talking about our project, this talk is not regarding, is not talking about uh, embedded uh, Linux uh, system, but uh, anyway, we think that we are some security concepts that uh, could interest the community. So, uh, anyway, okay, let's do it this way. Uh, several years ago, uh, we came up uh, with the conclusion that cybersecurity is not uh, a thing uh, when you're dealing with uh, embedded systems. And it is even more true if you are looking about the Internet of Things uh, project. Uh, this uh, Uh, sorry. Uh, so we decided to implement some um, some of our concept ourselves in order to bring security concept and primitive to all embedded systems. This was done in 2014, uh, just after the publication about the bad USB uh, vulnerability. I don't know if some of you know about this one, but I will come back uh, on this later. So, uh, back in, two, in 2014, we were looking for a use case to develop our project and to prove that it is possible to uh, develop secure and embedded uh, devices uh, within, um, uh, without a significant, significant impact on the, on the performances. Uh, but, oh, sorry. Uh, so the idea was to prototype the hardware platform and the software platform and to uh, release them to the community under open source and open hardware licenses. Uh, so this is, this is what uh, we are going to talk about uh, today. In order to help the community to integrate uh, our security primitive, we decided to implement them in form of uh, reusable module and in order to, to, to let you pick the, only the inter interesting uh, uh, stuff for your project. So before, uh, before talking about our project, I will give you some uh, uh, details about the context. And I will start within the USB enumeration, which is a concept that, uh, uh, that is very good for uh, plug and play devices, but uh, which can be a real threat regarding security matters. So when you are connecting a device to your to a PC, the host is starting to ask to the USB device, what, what are you? What feature do you support? And it is a device that is um, declaring what feature it, um, it supports. So you can have uh, a USB goodie or 
uh, a USB uh, thumb drive that can declare itself like uh, a keyboard or something else. So uh, if we come back to our use case, the USB uh, thumb drive that we have should only declare that it supports the um, uh, the mass storage protocol, and the system is supposed to transfer files to, to that thumb drive. But, uh, and this is useful to transfer data from uh, disconnected or agaped uh, networks. It is also useful to update your uh, industrial SCADA systems or uh, network infrastructure, but what do you think it will happen if uh, the USB thumb drive that uh, you are using uh, to perform such update on the uh, critical system will uh, present itself as a keyboard or uh, something um, malicious and exploit the vulnerability on your, on your host? It can be uh, really uh, critical and it, is, it became more uh, real in uh, 2014 because uh, some researchers have uh, highlighted that um, USB controller doesn't implement, the firmware in USB controller doesn't implement uh, secure update feature. Uh, this allows any attacker or any of you to update the firmware in the microcontroller. So uh, you can take uh, a, a regular USB device, uh, connect to one infected uh, host. This host will reprogram the USB controller and next time you will plug the USB thumb drive to, uh, to your critical infrastructure, the thumb drive, the firmware of the thumb drive, will uh, try to attack your systems. This, uh, one more time, is due to the lack of uh, uh, secure USB uh, update mechanism. So, uh, with this context in mind, uh, we decided to, uh, to do something about this point and to to implement uh, this feature in uh, a whole framework, a whole uh, product that will, uh, that will help us to prove that it is possible to mix security and performances. So the first things we have to look for is an open, uh, an open platform. And the first platform we highlight was the USB armory. Uh, which is an interesting platform, which is fully open source, but regarding the hardware specification, it is more a smartphone than a USB sun drive. Uh, it is a very powerful sock, and there is some, something that uh, we don't like very much, uh, because to boot this uh, Cortex-A, uh, so you, you have a boot ROM and you are executing some code that you don't know about. Uh, even if you dump the firmware on a platform, you are not sure that uh, this boot ROM, if you dump this boot ROM on a platform, you are not sure that it will be the same boot ROM on another platform. So there is a trust uh, issue on, uh, on this platform. And by the way, there is some vulnerability on, uh, on the, the boot room of, the, of this stock. Another interesting project it is, is uh, the Nitro Key. This one is a real USB, uh, USB sun drive. It is based on uh, a small microcontroller, but it is very small and too small for security. There is no um, hardware acceleration for encryption and decryption feature. There is no uh, segmentation of the memory uh, possible because there is no memory programmable unit. So uh, we were a bit uh, 
they don't point it, but it was okay because some of us know about electronics and we decided to develop our platform. In order to develop our platform, we decided to uh, think about the threat model that we were considering. So if you are developing a USB sun drive, you have to, to think about what the attacker can do on your device. The first thing is easy to, the, thing, the first thing is to light is easy. It is um, the, the teeth of the USB sun drive itself or uh, the illegitimate access because you have lost your USB sun drive on the street or something like that. So we have to, to implement some encryption, something like that in order to, to reduce this risk. The other risk is a software attack. You implement some firmware on your microcontroller, so um, you have a, a huge attack surface, which is uh, the, USB, the USB stack. Uh, like I stated before, the USB stack is very complex, even if it is uh, less important surface on a USB device, you have to, to be careful about that. And the last threat we consider is the hardware attack. Uh, we want that our device to be um, secure enough to prevent any um, side channel attack or any fault attack uh, on our system. But when you are thinking about uh, this, threat mode, uh, this threat, you, it is easy to, to have an answer. You want to, to pr protect your system uh, of uh, this attack, so okay, you can do that with a secure, a secure element or a, a secure IC. But the thing is, such device uh, give you some real uh, protection regarding hardware attacks, but they don't have uh, as much as um, uh, computation power than other microcontrollers. You have less uh, interfaces. You have a very, a very small device because these devices, these chips are usually designed for uh, smart cards. So we had to find another way to deal with that. And then we came up with uh, an STM32F4 from ST Microelectronic, which is based on our ARM Cortex M4. And this device is not uh, designed for security, but it has an implementation for the memory protection unit. It has a cryptographic accelerator which gives us the encryption primitives that we need in order to implement the encryption of the data at rest. And one interesting feature is it, even if this chip has an, a, a boot room code, you can override this boot from by uh, setting a GPIO uh, configuration, which means that the flash memory is aliased uh, ally on, the, on the boot from at boot. This feature is not perfect, but it allows us to, to get the control of the platform right after power on. Uh, around these chips, we had to, to, to deal with an external uh, fee in order to, to provide uh, USB high speed. That's, uh, that, that takes some space on the board, but it was okay for the form factor we were considering. And uh, if you are uh, doing or developing a 
USB sun drive, you have to, to have uh, uh, massive storage to store the, data, the user data. So for this development platform, we used an SD card because it is cheap and you can buy it everywhere. If you want a, an ECSD or something else, uh, you have to, to think about the production volume because that device for high capacity are not uh, e easily viable. Uh, uh, Around this, we put some uh, debugging interfaces. So you have the regular GTAG that will be uh, disabled uh, uh, during uh, the production and you have some console or some uh, test point that expose the um, uh, uh, other buses, communication buses. In order to reduce the risk of such an attack, we developed a system based on the, um, strong authentication at boot which use a smart card. And uh, if you have a smart card, you have to provide the pin code to, in order to unlock the, plat the smart card. So we provided uh, a touch screen in order to keep the control of the pin code and to, in order to, to keep it secret. So uh, the final design, the final, uh, final hardware design is this one. It is, uh, almost the side of a smart card, and even if it's, it is a bit um, uh, fat, uh, you, can, uh, you can still put it in your, your pocket. So. Okay, so, sorry. So as Mathieu said, um, we, we had uh, this uh, hybrid uh, approach to use um, uh, Cortex M4 for uh, the, the, uh, the USB stack and other stuff, and focus the sorry, and focus the, the security uh, on the smart card smart card side. So the smart card um, uh, world is kind of um, of strange because you have a lot of NDAs uh, around uh, secure ICs, and uh, not so much. Um, Ba uh, code base exists uh, that is open source in the smart card. This is why we, we had to, to focus on, the, on the, what we call Java card systems. Maybe some of you know, know that. So the, the Java card uh, ecosystem with the global, global platform ecosystem allowed to, to, um, to, um, to use um, a framework that is not open source per se, uh, it's a proprietary SDK by Oracle, but all the code produced, uh, all the applets produced uh, uh, using this framework can be open sourced. So we have decided to use uh, such a framework in order to, uh, to, uh, to provide and uh, share uh, our, our uh, secure applet. So the smart card is used, as we will see uh, after, um, for a strong user authentication. Okay. Uh, one of the, uh, the big advantages of uh, such uh, secure ICs uh, is that uh, they are uh, certified uh, with the common criteria. Uh, this means that they have a lot of security uh, against uh, side channel attacks and um, fault injection attacks, meaning that all the secrets that are embedded inside such platforms will be protected. Uh, against uh, some uh, high-level attackers, hardware attackers using uh, uh, oscilloscopes and, uh, and lasers to try to extract those secrets, which is not the case, of course, for regular microcontrollers. Okay, so here is a kind of uh, overview of our platform. You have the, uh, the smart cards, you, you have the main board, or uh, about the size of the smart card, and you have also the, the touch screen uh, used to provide the pin, and the, uh, the, the, the use case is only to plug it on uh, any, uh, any uh, computer and to get uh, uh, an encrypted uh, mass storage uh, 
that is with, with transparent encryption. Well, if we come back to the, to the threats that, we, that uh, Matthew introduced, so the bad USB threat, one of the big threats uh, related to that are uh, updates, up software upgrades. So we have to solve two main issues re regarding uh, software upgrades. First, the resilience of such upgrades, and then the security, of course, of such upgrades. So in order to, uh, to try to solve the, uh, the, re the resilience issues, so resilience meaning that uh, we always want um, the, the, the USB thumb drive to boot, even if there is a power failure or something else. So we always want to have a, a, a viable firmware inside the platform. So in order to solve the resilience issue, we have, we have chosen to, uh, to, uh, to use a flip-flop uh, partitions approach, meaning that uh, we have an initial loader uh, that is not upgradable and that is really minimal we, we really ensure that there is uh, quite nothing uh, in terms of software inside it. The, the loader uh, loads a flip partition, but if there is any issue with the, this partition, like a corruption of the flash, for example, we, uh, we execute the flop partition uh, in order to be sure that we have at least one of the two partitions that is uh, vi viable. So, okay, this solves the, uh, the, resili the resilience sorry, issue, but uh, we haven't talked about security yet. And this is why in order to bring security during the software upgrades, we have decided to implement both uh, DFU mode, meaning device firmware update mode, compatible with the USB uh, device firmware update specifications, and a nominal mode, uh, which is the nominal phase uh, step of the, of the device. So during the, uh, the device firmware update mode, uh, the idea is to be able to send through USB um, a signed and encrypted uh, firmware update that will be checked by the uh, device itself using the external authentication module, as we will see later. And uh, once the, the signature and the decryption of the firmware is performed, uh, it is written into Flash. During the nominal phase, well, it's only uh, encrypt and decrypt uh, transparently uh, user data and store them into the external SD card. Okay, so in order to implement uh, these two uh, DFU mode and, uh, and nominal mode, we have split our uh, software de design into uh, modules. Uh, we have the pin module, we have the token module handling the smart card, the pin module handling the, the external touchscreen, the USB module handling the USB communication, obviously, the crypto module uh, handling all the cryptographic uh, operations on the board, and the uh, SDIO module handling the uh, SD card uh, communication. Um, the smart card and the, uh, the, the, pin code, the pin code, the touchscreen um, uh, hardware allows us to bring uh, two-factor authentication to the board since we want, in order to unlock, to unlock, uh, to cryptographically unlock the board, we want the user to provide his pin and also to provide a smart card uh, keeping uh, his uh, secret safe and only when both factors are present, we can unlock the board. So the first thing that, um, that the board performs when it boots it's, uh, is um, mounting a secure channel with the smart card using uh, mutual authentication um, with encryption and authentication. And all the other uh, modules are not uh, up. So it's, uh, it's a security uh, measure in order to be sure that all the, um, all the possible uh, attack surface is, uh, is down until the, the proper authentication token is provided. So when the secure channel is properly mounted, uh, we can ask the user for, for his PIN on the, on the screen. The PIN is provided and we can ask the, the, the authentication uh, token to provide a, a master key that is injected inside the hardware cryptographic uh, accelerator of the board. Whenever this phase is uh, complete, 
we have the, uh, the master key uh, handling uh, all the encryption and decryption uh, operations of the board uh, injected into the hardware. Well, all the other modules that are uh, more critical, um, that, are, that are, sorry, less sensitive than the first ones, can uh, provide transparent encryption and decryption. And the good property here is that none of these modules can actually read the key that has been injected inside the hardware. Okay, uh, so this was the nominal phase, but we also uh, want to point out that we use the external token also for decrypting the uh, deriving session keys to decrypt the updates using the device firmware update mode. Okay, so for now we have only uh, talked about software architecture, but when it comes to um, to a real implementation, uh, we really want to isolate these modules, meaning that uh, we have all these uh, attack surface. The attack surface is, of course, the USB bus, the SD card side, the smart card side, and um, the PIN code side, uh, since an attacker is able to send malformatted data from these buses. So we want, really want to isolate all the modules so that we we have some defense in, in depth, meaning that even if one, one module is, uh, is vulnerable and exploited, there is no contamination of other modules. And in order to bring such, uh, such a security uh, feature, uh, well, we have decided to, uh, to, to use a microkernel. And hence, let's introduce why we have chosen to use a microkernel and why we have developed our own microkernel. So the first uh, feature we wanted from the microkernel uh, are complex user <coughs> uh, drivers. We really wanted the, the, the drivers to be implemented in, in user lands because those drivers handling USB stack, SDIO, are um, really complex and, and many uh, vulnerabilities could be, uh, could be embedded in such drivers. So we wanted those drivers to be put in user land and, uh, and, and not uh, privileged. We also, of course, wanted to support microcontrollers, microcontrollers meaning that uh, uh, in our microcontroller we don't have a, memory manage a rich memory management unit, like in uh, Big Socks. We only have a memory protection units with many limitations. Uh, we wanted to have a different in-depth um, co concept, such as uh, write, um, or execute uh, concept and stack canaries, etc. We wanted uh, simplicity and probability. We will uh, come back to this point later. We wanted, of course, uh, it to be open source. And finally, we wanted modularity and portability, meaning that uh, some sub-modules of, uh, of the microkernels must be reused for other uh, interesting projects. Uh, when looking at uh, the existing um, microkernels, we, we did not find any that, uh, that, that was fitting all these needs. This is why we have decided to implement uh, our own microkernel uh, named eWalk. So the idea uh, of eWalk is, as we have said, to isolate all the uh, drivers and the applications uh, inside the, the user land uh, mode. Uh, as we can see, we can find all the applications that uh, correspond to the different software modules that we have talked about uh, uh, later, uh, the USB, the SD, SDIO, uh, the cryptography, etc. And all the, uh, the, these uh, applications will use um, in their memory space uh, the, their driver, their software stack to handle the hardware. And the, 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 the aim, the main objective of, of the microkernel is to isolate all these uh, applications. When we focus on the memory layout and how we, we have implemented the, this isolation, we, we can see that um, all the uh, applications uh, can be split into three main, uh, three main parts. First, the RAM, where the data, the read-write data are put. Then the flash, where the code is put to be executed. And finally, the peripherals, so the, 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 the devices that are memory mapped inside the, uh, the SOC, uh, the SOC uh, layout. And only the kernel is executing in supervisor mode. All the rest of the applications are executed in user mode, of course. So when the USB applications, uh, application tries to access its registers, it's OK. Its code, it's OK. 
its, uh, its data in the RAM, it's okay, but when it tries to access the, the, another part of uh, the memory that it, it, it's not, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's data, it's not okay. And this, it's the same for the SDIO. Okay, so uh, when we consider uh, the, the attack surface uh, of, of such a microkernel, we have, of course, the system calls, that is an input API. And we have decided as in a defense in-depth in um, approach to, uh, to use Ada and Spark uh, as a strong typing language to bring more security here. Uh, when we consider, but, but we have chosen to, to have an, a hybrid uh, microkernel, mean, meaning that we have accepted to mix C and Ada and Spark. Uh, our approach is to tell that we don't need to, uh, to implement everything in Ada and Spark. There are some critical parts of the microkernel that must be implemented in, in Ada and proven in uh, Spark, such as the uh, memory protection unit, uh, the syscalls, uh, of course, uh, layer, etc., etc. But uh, we, we, have, uh, we have really limited uh, the, um, the defense in-depth concept to some modules. We also bring a dedicated um, uh, SDK based on uh, the kernel configuration uh, framework. Uh, and it, it allows to support multiple uh, SOCs and boards uh, and to customize the firmware for different boards. Uh, of course, with some hardware limitations for, uh, for some boards that do not support uh, crypto cryptographic acceleration, for example. When we summarize what we, uh, what we bring with the, our platform, we bring really um, some device firmware update and signature um, uh, primitives with the accelerated encryption, the microkernel that does the application's isolation, two-factor uh, two uh, with strong authentication, such as secu security primitives, and this allows us to uh, really uh, thwart some, uh, some of the, many of the, uh, the, uh, the threats that have been presented previously. Only some very advanced uh, hardware attacks will, uh, will remain. Okay, so today's release, because we, we are not releasing everything now, I will show the roadmap uh, in, uh, just now. Uh, today's release is, uh, is uh, the, mainly the iWork microkernel and the SDK. A blinky example with the user application handling uh, IPCs, GPIUs, and uh, UART uh, log through the kernel. And this will be on the uh, STM32 uh, F407 uh, discovery board from STM Microelectronics that you can all get for 20 euros. Um, and the, the, the roadmap is to bring in uh, January uh, 2019 the whole platform with the, the schematics of the hardware so the, the sources of the board that we have shown you, and all the, uh, the, the, the user land drivers with the, the full software stack that we have talked about. We, need, we still need some adjustments and some integration. This is why we cannot provide it today, sorry, but uh, this will come really, really soon. So as a conclusion, uh, beyond, beyond the secure USB key, uh, with the Wookie project, we, we, also, we really wanted to bring uh, the community with the, some modular security concepts. Uh, with first an isolation microkernel with the different in-depth in concepts, with Ada and Spark uh, as, a, uh, as a, a language to, uh, to, to implement such different in-depth. In, in a secure device firmware update me mechanism uh, with signature and strong cryptography. Also, external tokens, applets, and uh, uh, strong user authentication and firmware signature and encryption decryption protocols. And of course, a modular open hardware design. And of course, any contribution uh, is, is very welcome to, to this uh, project. We also want to thank uh, ADACOR um, to to having helped us uh, for the, uh, the ADA and Spark integration. And do not hesitate to, to ask them. There are some people from Atacor in the, in the, in the room, so do not hesit hesitate to discuss with them about this. Thank you very much for, uh, sorry, for your attention. And uh, if you have questions, you're welcome.
Yeah, okay, so um, why don't you pick one of the plenty of uh, RTOSs which did get some sort of uh, security review and instead wrote your own thing? I mean, there is like literally tens, maybe hundreds of uh, RTOSs and microkernel OSs which did go through some security audits and that sort of stuff. Yeah, you're, you're perfectly right, uh, like the SEL4 or, 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 or so family, because many of them uh, uh, did it on uh, memory management units mainly. Some of them did it on uh, memory protection units, that's right. But um, we, we really had some, um, some, uh, uh, some, some issues, for example, when uh, dealing with, um, uh, D, uh, with DMA uh, security or with uh, controlling the, the DMA um, uh, transfers because um, because well we we had to implement something that was really fast and really reactive. Many of these OSs do not include uh, a f uh, they include a full isolation regarding the memory protection unit, mm -hmm. but many of them do not uh, do, do not. Um, include uh, such uh, such uh, such threat for really high speed devices from our point of view and we also wanted to 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 bring the uh, even if uh, some of these kernels are proven uh, using some subset of c for example mm -hmm. uh, we really wanted to also to uh, to use a strong typing and uh, and the spark framework uh, to, uh, to to show that it, it's possible also to use uh, to use ADA to You're develop a micro proof of concept, basically. Sorry, it's basically just a proof of concept. This one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. How complex is it to reload a new software on your platform? Because if we, if it's open source, if we can reload a new OS on it, then we gain the access, we can modify it or extract data, or because we're on a data, data pass. So how is it complex to reload it? Of course, but um, maybe it was not really clear in the presentation, but you really have a, a device firmware update with firmware sig signature, so you cannot bypass such a signature. The, the only person able to reload the firmware is the, um, is the legitimate user of the platform. Since the firmware is signed, the, the JTAG is disabled. There is no uh, access through JTAG anymore. There is um, a readout protection uh, of uh, ST, ST microelectronics that, it, uh, that is enabled. So it's, when, when the firmware is, uh, is burned inside the, the, the flash, it's not possible to update it through other channels than the secure device firmware update. So anymore. what is your concept? Is it uh, you are providing the product to the users and then they have to upload their image yeah, first? Of course. We, the we, signatures first yeah, and so then the, it's done yeah. one for all and we, we, we you will never can update it no, again you, you, unless yeah. you have the key. Yeah, of course. So we provide the, the, the end user everything to deploy uh, a firmware to generate his keys to generate uh, everything he needs inside the smart card. So he is the master of, uh, of his device. He can do anything with his device, and he's the only one to sign firmwares for his device. And what if, if I take one of someone I would love to attack, mm -hmm. I bring mine, I put his SD card in, I put his uh, authentication card in, yeah, and this is my software now running on it. Yeah, but you're so still... Um, if if you if if you don't share the same encryption key stored on the smart card, it will not work. But if um, your card, your your uh, USB device, and the USB device you want to attack share the same secret key, uh, you can use it. Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, Mike. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Uh, yeah, but it's Mike? he's still missing the pin, the pin code. You have to Mike? the pin. You have to enter the pin code to unlock the card. So of course, if you have the smart card and the pin code, you impersonate the legitimate user. Can you the pin code? Yeah, but uh, the pin code will be locked if you try uh, many pin codes. Okay. There are some protections inside the smart card to. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, my next question is related to Erwan's uh, question. Uh, do you consider a supply chain attack uh, as part of your threat model? Uh, for example, um, well, 
first of all. Good, good question. To, thank you. Yeah, so, so the, these, uh, the supply chain mode uh, are, are part of the advanced hardware attacks that we were talking about. And we said that so we cover uh, software attacks, basic hardware attacks, but not advanced attacks. So Trojan hardware, uh, advanced Trojan hardware are not uh, covered by, yeah, by our design. You're right. If you want to, um, to deploy uh, our device, uh, the main idea is that you have to, uh, to program in, in premises the, the board and to store your key at this time. Uh, if you give the key to uh, the manufacturer, uh, this is done. Uh, we consider that you, you don't have any trust in uh, so, the device. Uh, and anyways, uh, it's, it, it's still complex attack because you have seen there is this uh, mutual authentication between the smart card and the, uh, and the board. You will have to get the board keys to dump the flash from one board. Uh, in order to be able to uh, to show yourself as the, legim the legitimate board, because the smart card and the board are t are tightly uh, paired using this uh, okay. this secret channel. Okay. So uh, as long as you don't extract the firmware, yeah, exactly. uh, with the optical you're, you're, uh, you're safe. microscope yeah. or something, yeah. you're but, safe. But okay. This this could be possible because okay. yeah, the microcontroller is is not a secure IC, so. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of companies doing mm -hmm. firmware extractions for microcontrollers. Yeah. Um, did you consider glitching attacks? Sorry? Did you consider glitching attacks, as in you fluctuate the power supply to the micro and maybe you can use that to bypass the signature checks somehow? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand what... Uh, f f fault attacks, Inge fault injection attacks. No, no, no. glitch. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. glitching. You just uh, turn an on and off the power, and the microcontroller can misbehave. Yeah, yes. So such attacks are uh, are kind of covered by the uh, authentication step that is necessary to uh, to unlock the board. So such an attacker that will be able to, um, in, in order to 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 extract interesting data, mm -hmm. you have to authenticate to the uh, to to the platform. The right. smart card is uh, protected against such attacks since right. it, uh, it is a secure IC. So the attacker will have to concentrate on the board itself to attack yeah, it. Yeah, so you would use glitching to actually install your own custom firmware into it and then give it back to the user and he would eventually put in the pin. That, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good question. But in order to, to install your own firmware, oh. you uh, remember that you have uh, up, up, updating the firmware right. needs to decrypt it. Right. And there is some. There are constant interactions with the okay. with the smart card during firmware update. Okay. Okay. So when if you try to attack it here, okay, you will maybe bypass some stuff, but still it's encrypted and it won't be decrypted. So you actually need the smart card to, yeah, update, to update the system. Exactly. Maybe it was not clear also in the. You need the smart card and Thanks. the pin code. Yeah. So you need the user in front of you when you are glitching the board. Mm -hmm. Um, but if um, someone in the supply chain uh, preloads uh, special firmware uh, which emulates uh, the smart card itself so that uh, the end user will uh, uh, upload his keys and his own firmware uh, believing that he's running as the main firmware but there is another firmware uh, below which emulates everything. Complex hardware attacks. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if you emulate the firmware. Okay, so why wouldn't I just have a USB stick and a computer with a smart card reader? Why do I want your device instead? Uh, be because you, you do not need to have a software application on the computer to handle uh, both uh, encryption. Because if you have a, a thumb drive and a smart card reader, yeah. you have uh, to use the software stack on top of some maybe interested OS to handle that, right? Well, yeah, but then the software stack, the, the PSCI, which is handling this, and OpenSSL get a lot of security attention. And again, it gets a lot of security reviews. Your stuff does not. 
Yeah, uh, I agree, but uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't prevent from a malware being installed independently from OpenSSL or another crypto crypto right. stack. A malware can be installed here and maybe sniff all all, all, uh, all your keys. The the thing is, we we don't trust the host platform that uh, we connect uh, our devices. Okay. So we want to uh, to to keep the pin code secret and keep it on the board. Okay, but so you, you expect you the consumer to, to trust your platform instead? Actually, we, yes, but uh, we provide all the source code and uh, if anyone wants to, to perform a, a security review, uh, mm. it's okay for us. Uh, we want to be, uh, to be <laughs> evaluated. Yeah, audited or audited. whatever, of course. Got it, thanks. Uh, you, you're saying that you're, you don't trust the host computer to perform the security, that's the, why you are building the device in the first place. But didn't you say that the user is supposed to sign its own firmware and upload it? Where, is, where should it take place? Like, see if there is a problem. I, I agree, but uh, do you agree that, um, that computers that sign and deploy firmwares are really must be trusted? And yeah, but you said it's a, the user is yeah. supposed to do it, so... Yeah, of course, but th these are two different scenarios. I mean, when you have a USB thumb drive, you can plug it whenever you want, mm -hmm. in, any, in any host. That's the, uh, the, 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 you, the nominal use case. When you update it, it's clear that you have to, uh, to, to use um, a trusted computer to push, to sign, and push the firmware. Okay. The, the, the idea uh, is when you are doing the provisioning step, you, have, you, you should, you must uh, do it on a secure platform, probably disconnected from other, other networks, a platform that you really trust to be sure that uh, no one is listening anything. So you system. still rely on educating the, the user of a course. bit? Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. Okay. 